Hi, welcome to my beginner's guide to Trials of Fire. I'm Icon and this video will guide you through the basic gameplay loop of this neat little game. I'm going to explain the combat system, the overworld exploration system, explain the itemization and talent system and everything that falls in between. The first thing that I want to mention about this game, it looks pretty similar to your standard deck builder experience but actually it's one of the most innovative games that i've played in this sector because it features a very very unique combat system which is highly different to all the games that i've played and it's also really great so let's get right started i want to explain the combat system first because this is kind of like the backbone of this game and the exploration window here is something which will be explained a lot smoother once we get past the combat. So let's follow into some combat situation. Now, there we are on the combat board. I have taken the liberty to just activate an event which spawns a combat. So on the left side, we have our people. We see here the cards of our hunter, of a warrior, and our elementalist. On the other side, we see our enemies the cards of the Charred Cultist and the cards of the Charred Warrior. You might also hover over this sector here to check out how much you know about these enemies. So as you see here, I've never encountered a Charred Cultist. If you right click here, you gain a lot of useful information, but we're going to talk about the combat system now in general first. Up here we have the Recycle Shrine and also most importantly this number depicts our amount of willpower. Willpower is used to pay our cards. Every card here has a number in the upper right corner which depicts its willpower cost. If there's nothing like this blank circle here it's a free effect to use. To move across the board, as you see here, we don't even have any options or anything whatsoever. There are two methods to do so. There are for one cards that allow you to move, and the other thing is by recycling cards and transforming them into movements. So, which sounds a little bit uh, off at first, it's pretty easy once we show it. So I right click this spell from my elementalist, and then it goes up here, generates one point of willpower. We can now see that this willpower point is purple. It's worth mentioning that you can use this willpower for not only paying cards, but also for moving. But the purple dot here marks that the willpower, that one willpower point of the pool is made from the elementalist. If we now go over and recycle one skill of a warrior, we see there joins a blue dot, which see, which just is an explanation to see where these points are assigned to because it's quite important to notice that we can't move our hunter with these generated willpower points but really important to note our hunter could spend these willpower points to activate his skills with it's a, a little bit tricky at first but it feels very organic once you start working with it so if you don't have any means to move your characters just transform cards to do so that's the gist of it. Now, we're going to talk about other things next. There are power cards. Power cards are like, well, I, I like to look at them like enchantments or, or things that give you passive bonuses. So, for example, we have here Prepare. It generates a point of willpower at the start of my turn. It's even free. What's not to like about that? The thing about powers is a power card gets discarded once the hero suffers as much damage which is shown here in that green rectangular spot there so four points of damage and the prepare will fall off this is a way to get rid of powerful effects on your enemies as well as you see here it's now hovering above his icon and when you mouse over people you can also get all the information you need so we're going to move our peeps now here a bit and I'm going to activate the defensive stance on my warrior, defense after performing a melee attack. Defense is quite easily explained. Every point of defense is one absorbed point of damage. Easy as that. So I want to give my hunter a chance to move a little bit further here because the thing is I can't he can't hit anything right now because these barricades block his sight. Magic can ignore sometimes these blockades, so use that to your own advantage. So 
we're going to move that and here's a nice thing as you see here there's this eyeball icon over the cultist as soon as I move here which means I have a clear line of sight towards that target now so when you want to know how far attacks reach it's either in the text or in the graphic so we see here how this um, down here we see how this thing works flame fan will generate damage Let's do it like that here just like that keep in mind friendly fire is a thing so flame fan is not able to hit this enemy I can't transform the card into anything that I can't transform I could transform the card but then I would be able to move into range so I can't do anything for this turn now at the end of the turn there are a couple of things worth mentioning as you see here we have willpower points left willpower which is unspent via recycled cards transforms into defense at the end of the turn so this one blue dot will transform into two points of defense for my warrior so I could now use all these cards to generate a little bit of defense in this way Trials of Fire is very fair because it doesn't nail you 100% down on luck when you want to block, for example. You can use every card as an ineffective block, but there are cards which do that way better. So last but not least, I want to talk about the redraw function. As we see here, there's this uh, card pile and the green number shows you how often you are allowed to redraw. Redraw is a really awesome functionality. As we see here, our warrior S has now one green dot below that number, which means when I activate that, she will redraw a card and you can redraw as often per fight as shown here by the number and you can redraw as many cards as you have discarded so basically you can also discard your whole starting hand and redraw a new one this gives you even more flexibility in your in your options so you're not too nailed down in a bad hand whatsoever just keep in mind that these car that these effects are limited per fight so i can't even re redo undo that you can undo a lot of actions by just clicking on the Recycle Shrine, but not all of them. Fairness must be. So I'm going to transform the last cards here to generate some defense. You can also keep the last card on your hand to keep it for the next turn. So now we, we everybody draws three new cards. And as we see here, our Elementalist kept the Flame Fan spell. Now we get our enemies to act. I have a quick resolve of enemy turns activated so if this is confusing you can turn you can slow that down in the options as well so a new turn begins we have now the extra willpower from the preparation skill and it's now our time to act as we see here that shield thingy is depicting the enemy's defense stats and I want to talk about the characters and the differences now they not only have different cards but every character class has a perk. For example, the warrior has a taunt skill. Whenever I play a card and I'm adjacent to an enemy, I generate defense for the whole squad, which is really cool. So we might want to use that. So I want to move closer to give that charred warrior a good whack this turn. So, but we'll slow down here for a moment. The elementalist has a perk and the hunter has a perk. I don't want to explain them here in depth because it knows it's enough that you know that every class has a perk but there's also elite enemies like this chart cultist which have perks so he's volatile and dealing two damage to all adjacent enemies when he takes damage so basically you might want to use only ranged attacks on this dude to avoid getting blasted which is especially um uncool regarding that my elementalist is standing right next to that thing but let's just take an attack by my warrior and I want to demonstrate combo attacks. So, here we go. Why does she not attack? Here we go, another swipe. Here goes the combo strike. I'm not quite sure why she didn't do that in the first place, but the basic thing is if you're standing right next to an enemy, you're if two people stand right next to an enemy or monsters in that case, when a melee attack is performed, they get combo attacks. So let's do this one more time. 
but not activating on ranged attacks as you see here. Use this to your advantage because this might be only one point of damage extra, but it racks up in the long run. It really does. So we're now going to use the Adrenaline card, which generates willpower whenever she deals damage. And we're going to move our mage a little bit further back because she's already low on HP and I don't want her to die this turn. So, where people were burning, which gets resolved here, and now the enemy turn. As you see here, the enemy is using the combo effect as well. And here we go. Now we can continue attacking these guys, but I actually would prefer to focus my attacks on one enemy at first. That's something I can strongly recommend here because it's always good to wait out uh, or no, no to take down a enemy completely because it's just easier to take control over a situation like that. Also keep in mind he was not able to do his power shot skill because he was adjacent to an enemy. Ranged attacks are blocked if you are adjacent to an enemy. It's very valuable to know and notice. So my warrior is taking down the charred warrior and now I'm going to move away from this cultist before I start attacking him because I don't want to hurt my people. Speaking about hurt, we're going all we're now going to recycle all our last cards to generate some defense. So the basics of combat now are should be pretty clear and this is a really awesome deep and challenging combat system which I really really enjoy because you have not only not only have you to, you got to focus around the way combat works, you also have to manage willpower generation, which is a little bit janky at first, but I can only say it's a lot of fun once you get used to it, because it's truly innovative and it's a completely different take on this genre compared to the stuff that I have played in the past. So we're now going to transform <laughs> defenses on my warrior and you see here it's already it there's already a preview on the defense rating of my warrior and let's see I'm pretty sure this guy will blast my elementalist though of course would be silly to go on the elemental on the other guy so one thing is worth mentioning it's not the end of the world if somebody dies I'm going to take down my elementalist voluntarily here to show you what happens if that happens. So we're now going to take down this guy and win this fight. Every character that has died during an engagement is not really dead. He or she will receive instead a injury, a random card, a so-called weakness which falls into your deck and has things and does things when you draw it. It can be only removed for the remainder of a battle by playing it or permanently by using magical or mystic herbs to cure it at the campsite. But more of that later. So after a one fight we get or spoils of victory among those items, gold and food because we need food to live. But here goes another reward, we got a level up. In this game level ups are not gained by experience or something like that they are a, a a fixed kind of reward that falls to your party it's also important to notice that you can't level what that you can't put all the level ups on one person you have to spread them basically i can only level up somebody to level three once everybody else is in level two just worth mentioning so let's go through a level up i want to go for my hunter for example so here we see you have nine cards as your class kit you can't exceed that if we want to have a new card we have to replace one of those every time we level up we get a choice of cards that we can use so there among those are even summons and different actions different powers whatever you want to we're going to pick up that summon because I want to and I'm going to I need to replace that but if you don't want that you can also upgrade existing cards in your deck this is very cool because this means you can specialize and customize your deck like you want to right now I'm going to pick up the wolf because I like that replace one power shot because I feel like this is one basic move too much and let's confirm that 
So, as you see here, my Elementalist is back on track with 4 of 10 HP after dying. So, let's talk about the exploration system, the equipment system, and all the wonderful things in between. I want to stick with the equipment and skill system for a moment longer because we were just uh, in the in the fight and this makes it easier to explain it from there. As we see here, we have here the combat slots, we have a evaluation how your cards are shuffled in the deck, very important to know your importances in the deck. and here these equipment slots these icons show which kind of items fit into these slots and every item yields yet again new skills so this is the other way how you build your deck you have an equipment deck and you have a class deck the thing is equipment cards can also be enhanced by upgrading them via materials that you find during your journeys. We have had a few items here on the plunder already, and as we see here, our Elementalist, for example, has four different slots for weapons. In this slot, you can fit in a mace or a staff, a dagger or a tome, a tome or a potion, and so on and so forth. These items all give you different skills, and this is where this game goes nuts in terms of individualization because you know all these items play out differently and sometimes for example this character can wield two tomes but i have not managed to put two spears into the hands there are some limitations which aren't as easily to to understand but as you see here all these slots generate new skills and it's up to you to experiment around with that there are two more things that I want to talk about, and that's quality and armor. Quality determines, or quality is an average of the quality rating, or no, a total of the quality rating on your of your items. I don't know. I think you start with a quality rating of one, and every point of quality on your gear gets added on top of that. And this is the number of redraws in your fight. So quality increases your versatility, and armor is not some absorption that you take get, that you get but instead it's a fixed amount of hp that is added on your pool for example our hunter will start with 12 hp into each fight due to his armor of two our warrior s will start with 14 or in this case 11 since she's banged up important to notice here is it will always use up the first at first the armor points before it starts to hurt your real HP. So basically armor is a virtual HP buffer which protects you from real harm for a while. So this is a really cool system because it lets armor work differently than blocking and at the same time it's there and it is wonderful to execute. So to sum it up in this game you build your deck with the class cards and with equipment cards. And equipment comes by by adventuring, which leads us to the next and last chapter of this tutorial. Adventuring is made on this map here. You see up here is a mini-map depicting these areas. We have the journal which leads us to our next, uh, our next main quest plot. And up here we have our stamina and or, well, determination or, or moral. So, moral depletes the longer you travel around without finishing the main objective. So basically it's a timer that gives you a feeling about how long you can doodle around before your people get lost on that quest. As you see here, a high moral gives you plus skills and a low moral, for example, will punish you. And there's stamina, which means you have to rest from time to time or your people will get punished again. So stamina is recovered by resting, determination is recovered by doing main quest objectives. Completing a main quest objective also will remove all the, the injuries in your deck. As you see here, there are three distinct icons which are basically chapters of your big journey. Also up here is the, the symbol is depicting how good your resting spot is. So we're going to set up camp here to explain that system. And as you see here, the button is green, which shows we're at the shelter. So where we did that adventure, we get stamina bonus and health bonus while resting. In the rest menu, 
we will get the option to just rest, which uses one stack of food and heals up everybody. We can upgrade items. We can meditate to upgrade or forget class cards from heroes, or we can use those Mystic Herbs to remove injuries. When you want to upgrade items, it's quite simple. You just need to have the necessary materials to upgrade that item. When you upgrade that item, as you see here, it's just the same as with leveling up the related skills get improved. The higher the quality of the item, the higher the demand of the upgrade materials, but also the higher the rewards, because you see, this tome has two skills on it, whereas the green item has only one. So rarity of items also determines how many skills there are on, on these items. There are also legendary items, which in even include own perks, which make them even more powerful, and three cards, of course. So. We can rest now, and as you see here, our stamina is refilled, our HP kind of like, I'm going to rest one more time, and then we're good to go. So when you're traveling around, you see here in the mouse over section what that encounter will most likely be, and how much travel costs in terms of stamina this does cost you. And that's about it. That's how Trials of Fire works. You, of course, generate some meta currency when you uh, end your quests. I'm going to talk about that as a last thing. So we gained some adventure XP and we increased the soul level of these people, which unlocks extra class skills. So there's something to strive for as a meta progression. Overall, Trials of Fire features not only these three characters, of course, there are six characters. I just made a complete beginner profile for the sake of the tutorial, and there's behind, barred behind little mini quests some new character classes to play around with. So that sums it up, and I hope you guys have fun with this game. Seriously, Trials of the Fire is an awesome individual game which has not enough attention in my opinion. It's one of the freshest and most impressive takes on the roguelike deck builder genre because they invented a completely unique and special feeling combat system which is seriously fun to play. The longer you uh, you play it, the more fun it is. It's really a little bit challenging, a little bit challenging at first because it features so many foreign new mechanics, but after I played it a couple of hours, I really, really got drawn into it, and I can only recommend it. Not only, and I didn't even get, I didn't even talk a single bit about this wonderful dark fantasy post-apocalyptic story background. On top of that, all right. So I hope that was of some help of you. Drop your comments down below if there's any question left, or if you feel like I've left out some features which are really, really important to mention. Okay, uh, go away on that. Also leave a thumbs up uh, on that video if you want to give this video some appreciation and let it float on the algorithm a little bit better. And last but not least, down there in the channel, I do daily videos and if you like that content, maybe you want to subscribe and turn on those notifications to keep posted, uh, to stay posted. So last but not least in the description down there below is also a link to my Twitch channel where I do regular streams. So you might want to check that out too. And feel free to check out those support links for coffee or whatever you might want to do. If you enjoyed my work, I'd be really appreciating. But enough of the advertisement. Let me thank you one more time for watching this video because that is the biggest support of them all. Stay awesome and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.